Yo. Yo, what's going on, everyone? Once many reactions. We got the UFC 300 is right around the corner. By the time this is on your plate, it's probably like a week away, maybe less than a week, depends. Yeah. Um, but super exciting card. It's got everybody stiff as a rock. <laughs> so <laughs> I feel like you were planning that. Because <laughs> there's no way you would have laughed like that if you weren't fucking planning. <laughs> I thought of that like right before. I Jesus anyway, <laughs> so, so we're looking at uh. No, this <laughs> oh, <is> rock. <laughs> yeah, that's what we mean. Everyone's like, <laughs> uh, but we got a little UFC 300 preview. So, what fight are you most excited for? Let us know in the comments. Ooh, what fight are you most excited Gagey for? Gagey Holloway. Yeah. Yes. I mean, it's like... Sames. Um, yeah, and I don't but, care if that's the fucking basic bitch answer. It's the, it's the fucking truth. <laughs> but, I mean, um, why wouldn't you be? Yeah. I am like... I, it's a, a dumb one because it's just like a character building one, but I'm... I'm always excited to see Bo Nickel back in action. I want to see... Bo Nickel's him. nasty. I want to... Like, it's more of just like I want to see him keep fighting because I just want to see him get like the opponents that he probably should be getting. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, he um, he's got to be like in line for some ranked opponents. Yeah, I'm sure it's like around the corner. If it's not like the fight, if he comes up with the dub, um, maybe the thing, not like the fight after this one, then the one after that one. He's got to start seeing some guys. Mm -hmm. Cause it took Sean O'Malley a minute, right? Dude, uh, yeah. You know what else is going to be free too coming up? What? Hamza Chimaya versus Robert Whitaker. That's a fight night. Yeah. No, it's like a free thing because it's happening. Uh, hold on. Let me just fact check myself. But yeah, it, the the event is free. Huh. Hamza Chimaya, Robert Whitaker. That's cool. Yeah, it's uh, there's a reason. It's like for the it. UFC and ABC thing. Exactly what it is. Yeah, it's a fight night. Um, yeah, I think like they usually like go big for those ones. Yeah, it's because in Saudi Arabia, so I think it's gonna be like a weird time. Ah, uh, okay. Um, but yeah, dude, that's a sick fight. Yeah, it's awesome. Like that's the second best fight on UFC three hundred. <laughs> in <laughs> my opinion, <laughs> like in the UFC. The number identified with pay-per-view events usually appears to have no great significance. But every so often, amidst the routine, emerges a monstrous event. Tonight is a celebration of all the UFC has become. Every We've had times. UFC 100 and 200. 200, sorry. is UFC 200, the biggest night in UFC history. And now... After months of speculating what could possibly come for UFC 300. 100 was special, 200 was special, but for 300, we're building the greatest card ever assembled. The big question is, who's he gonna be? We have oh. finally... Do you know that they're doing a, um, an event in the sphere? Oh, yeah. yeah oh, yeah. It's gonna be dope. September. Yeah. Also, I learned that Cinco de Mayo isn't Mexican Independence Day. From Dana White. Yeah, I they're feel like doing, I should, yeah. They're doing the sphere thing on Mexican Independence Day. Yeah. They said they're going to incorporate some shit with it. Yeah, he's on, uh, I think, it might have been Theo Vaughn or whatever, and they were talking about it. I was like, you son... I thought Cinco de Mayo, this whole time I've been looking like an idiot. What is Cinco de Mayo? With the sombrero. Then? I've been walking around with sombreros. But every... what is Cinco de Mayo then? <laughs> um, they, they had some, like, war, I think. They beat France or something like that. Oh, okay. Maybe. I don't know. Okay. Know. Cool. Good for them. <laughs> Arrived. And they're just like, hey, white people, celebrate this. <laughs> Here he is, the inimitable Alex Poetan Pereira, one of the most popular fighters in the world. I think he's Comanche. No way. <laughs> it's a completely different part of the world. <laughs> we were talking about Comanches on another video. No. <laughs> champion of the Not world, being weird. Alex Pereira, who aims he looks to so defend his hair. belt for the first time against the former champion of this division, Jamal Hill. Alex Pereira, he is violent, he is scary, and he will be taking on Jamal Hill. Like Pereira, he is a world-class kickboxer with serious power. 
Herrera intends to sustain his rapid rise. For Let's go, Jamal Hill. His legacy. Yeah, what do you Hill think? You, you, do you want him to win? Injury better than yeah, I, um... The, want, I, and I'm, then what's your pick? I'm kind of childish in my, like... I like Izzy, so... So now I don't like you. Because uh, you, you beat up my favorite fighter. <laughs> um, but, uh... <laughs> So, but yeah, I gotta go. I, so for for that reason, I I want Jamal Hill to win, but I would not ever bet one single dollar against Alex Pereira. Yeah, I mean, I could see it going either way. Like, I still think the um, who did he beat to get the the belt in the first place? Pereira. God, that's skipping me. But like, I can still see him having like. 205 growing pains even though he's gigantic but like my i'm leaning towards Pereira. yeah just trying to think an animal the fuck did he be? yeah i gotta look it oh up. was it uh yeah uh, yeah 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 and yeah. he's nice too so it's and like who jamal hill beat because he won the belt right he won the belt and then he kind of essentially lost it i think without fighting yeah that was <laughs> that was hurt. one of those situations i forget who he took it from that belt's just been getting passed around it might have been uh John Jones is like no, no, the old, the old guy from Brazil. He was like in his forties when he won it. Uh, oh no, you know what it was? I think it was Yuri Prohaska. Um, he got hurt, and he had to, cause he he took it from was it Glover? Okay, Glover's who I was just talking about. Yeah, because yeah. he remember he was like getting beat up, and then he like got him like last like ten seconds, got him in a choke. Oh him, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then I think something happened where he ended up like having to like relinquish the belt, and then Jamal Hill came in and took it. Okay, and then Jamal Hill had to relinquish it too. And for maybe he game. has an interim. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> that division's been wild since John Jones bounced. Is truly his. I'm truly the best. That's why I say I'm the king because I know I'm the best in this weight division. And whenever I do fight him, he vai falar que é melhor do que eu, mas na hora, pô, vou ter que mostrar. And in the co-main event is a fight that promises nothing short of absolute violence as the newly minted BMF champion Justin Gaethje takes on another bona fide BMF in his own right, Max Holloway. Justin Gaethje making history, defending the belt, he's taking on Max Holloway. His name is Highlight for a reason. When you mix Highlight and Bless, you get a Bless Highlight. I know that he's going to try to take my head off. And he knows it's coming his way. It's going to be beautiful. To beat the best, you gotta. No, to be the best, you gotta beat the best, and the best is blessed, baby. <laughs> DC, Dude. I'm the daddest man on the planet. <laughs> yeah, he always goes after him. <laughs> I want DC next. <laughs> You've been taking everything I worked for, motherfucker. Do, do you remember that? He said the whole date he has real to uh, DC. <laughs> I fucking love that. Yeah, I, I was um. Kind of kidding about the, the Izzy thing about him being my favorite. But I know Max is. is yeah, Max, Max is, is your number one yeah, for sure, right? My guy. I don't, that's like one of those fights I'm going to like watch from like behind the couch. Just like, oh no, please don't yeah. knock him out. I love Max Holloway too, but I do. I fucking love Justin Gaethje too. It's such a, yeah. They're both like they're so fun. Top too. favorite fighters yeah. ever. And so, yeah, I'm just, just going to watch it like, you know, unbiasedly and not care who wins kind of thing. But, yeah. I feel like Gaethje's going to kick his ass just because he's bigger and he hits so hard. And, like, when, when Max fought Dustin, like, they were, like, even from a boxing standpoint, I thought Max was getting his shots in. Dustin just Dustin was clearly just doing more damage because yeah. of the size difference. And that's what worries me about this fight. If Max proves me wrong, though, I'd be stoked. Yeah, that would be... I, I, I wonder what the uh, the like the betting line is because I would imagine he's probably like a pretty big underdog in this one. Yeah, and I mean, so. dude, betting on him is fine. But also, too, dude, it also sucks that Ilya Taporia just beat Volk, and yeah. it's like, dude, no, but like <laughs> that's the perfect time for Max to step in, right? Yeah. Like he fought Volk three <laughs> you know, times. He's like finally it. a new champion, like yeah, and now he's gonna kind of like fucking yeah g- have to go through this. <laughs> yeah. It's very grueling. <laughs> And that's not We're talking all. to you. Charles <laughs> Oliveira is back on his warpath to reclaim lightweight gold as he takes on the hungry and surging contender looking to earn his shot at the belt, Armand Sarukian. A battle for the ages you? in the shark infested light. If, 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 if last name must be right? the yeah. next challenger to the throne. Is this not I I exactly the right fight to make? Dude, this is going to be absolute 
fire. UFC 300 is absolutely stacked from top to bottom. Oh yeah, Yuri Barashi's on the card. UFC yeah, shit. Returns to Las Vegas for another this is a good one. Night. Yeah, dude. Get ready it's for an inside the whole ass fight night before the, the fucking card of yeah. all time. Yeah, dude. Fucking Aljo versus Calvin Cater. Yeah, it's fucking nuts. That's insane. And then fucking uh. The UFC's yeah, there's a bunch of good ones. Even Davidson uh, Figueredo versus uh, fighters of all time. Oh, yeah, Cody yeah. Garbrandt, and that's one. Name that stands out is Always love favorite, seeing Cody Garbrandt get beat. <laughs> we all know the deal by now when it comes to the records. I actually that... feel like I don't hate Cody Garbrandt anymore because he's lost so much. But like I, I remember that Dominic Cruz fight. It just made him a villain to me forever. Yeah. Yeah, did we watch that together? Yeah, because that right, cool. that's when I think Noon. Yeah, that's oh my god, that was so glorious. Yeah, when <laughs> Nunez fucking lit up Ronda Rousey like a Christmas tree. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. That that was might have been my even my first time seeing Cody Garber, and I was like, I fucking hate this guy. Mm-hmm. And uh, but yeah, it was like him just getting. Yeah, he fucked Dominic Cruz up though. Yeah, that was like, like that's his moment because ever since then it's just been he, he lost to Dillashaw twice and yeah. just like Kai Car of France knocked him out. Pedro Munoz like he just gets, just gets it's, he's one of those guys him. that like he the button got touched. Yeah, and now, and now it's like, just gets touched a lot. Yeah, um, he did have a really nice knockout the same night as that O'Malley oh, yeah. one. The fucking just like yeah. the, oh my. There's God. like two of the knockouts of the year in the same. He's night. a fun fighter to watch. Yeah, he's just also a fun fighter to like hate on kind of. <laughs> yeah. Um, Dude, do you know? Do you remember Joe Rogan actually said Ronda Rousey got lit up like a Christmas tree though, like on in the live? Uh, no. He goes, "Oh my god, <laughs> she lit her up like a Christmas tree, <laughs> like crazy. on the live." <laughs> Man has his name is plastered across the UFC record books. You'll likely know the credentials by now. Most submissions and finishes in UFC history. His mentality, charismatic personality, and his brutal assault on what has been regarded as the most talent-stacked division in the sport for I like Charles now. Has made him yeah. one of the most He's cool, but I just feel like, dude, all these guys are just... And although his title reign and his historic <laughs> win streak came to an end when he faced Islam Makachev like, no at UFC that, 280, yeah. he reaffirmed his presence among the best once again. Charles went out yeah, he fucked the Neil Gary Show. in very, very exciting fashion. And the kind of style that Oliveira always does. The man's a maniac in the best type of way. And if he is to step in there with the champ again, he needs to prove himself one more time. But he has his hands full against a rising contender from the next generation of absolute killers, Armand Sarukian. It almost would be cool to see this guy win. I like Charles too, so like not hoping for it, but just to have like, if someone beats Charles, like the way Charles ran through literally everybody but Islam, it's like, oh, this is a fucking heavyweight fight. Like too yeah. coming off a vicious knockout win over Benil Dariush and aims for a rematch with the lightweight king. And at 21 and 3 in his career, his rise has also been nothing short of impressive. Arnold Sarukian is only 27 years old and he gets better and better every single time you see him. He's flying right now. The young explosive threat in every area is in for his biggest test yet on April 13th. Armin versus Oliveira. There's a lot on that announcement, guys. This is a fantastic fight, but it makes all the sense. Despite being the betting underdog, it seems like Oliveira has the edge in most areas. Uh, He's an overwhelming sniper in the stand-up. And wait, is it Oliveira the betting underdog? Yeah. Comes to what? Jiu-Jitsu. I'm on spot top level t- competition, but no one at the level of Charles Oliveira. Yeah, what? Will the experience of Charles Oliveira be able to counteract the youth and the inexperience of Ramon Okay, Sarukian? I was actually, the, what I was going to pause and say is like, okay, how old is Charles Oliveira? Like 30, what, 7 max? You think he's that old? That's what I'm saying. Like, because they're acting like... I feel like he's... The age thing is a big deal. I'm going to guess. 33. Guess 33. It's also straight from my... 34. Okay. So, but like... I was just about to pause and say, like, Armand's 27. I feel like UFC is one of those rare sports where the dudes in their 30s like are very often like still 
very much in their prime. Yeah. It's not like a wide receiver in the NFL where, like, you once you hit that, like, 30 years old, like, you're not as good anymore. Like, a running back or, like, yeah. you know, like, <laughs> like if UFC, you kind of have that. It's, like, almost like that experienced old man strength thing where it's, like, you still hang with the younger dudes. Yeah, I completely agree. There's, like, hmm. still a lot of high-level fighters in their 30s, like... Mo- I mean, most of the guys we're talking about are in their 30s. Yeah. Like, this card. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It's like, I feel like the younger dudes, like, kind of... And obviously, there's an exception to every rule that we just talked about. But in yeah. general, what I'm saying, like... Like, obviously, like, John Jones, when he was younger, was a fucking animal. But it's yeah. like... Yeah, I don't think... Yeah, thir- I wouldn't look at that and be like, oh, 34, you're slowing down. Like, I, maybe if he's, like, 38. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. like okay, even, like, 36. I feel like 34, you're still relatively... I feel like at least till, like... The 33, 34 range, you're still, like, you're solid. Yeah. Although, we've seen him vulnerable at times, as he's susceptible to being hit quite frequently. So if Armand catches him with an explosion, he could very well end the fight. Not to mention, he's a beast of a wrestler, and hot with momentum at the moment. This fight gonna be incredible and uh, UFC 300, you're gonna remember that fight all your life. This one has fireworks written all over it, and whoever takes it will set themselves up for another huge moment next. Regardless of a physical BMF belt, Justin Gaethje I mean, and Max Russian. Holloway are straight up BMFs no matter what. Yep. The resume of Max Holloway is one of the best in the promotion's history. Facts. Over the course of 12 years, he's carved a path of destruction through the featherweight division, doing just about everything. When you go up and down his resume, you're talking about fights against the greatest fighters of this era. You're talking about a consistently high-level entertainment production for Max. But his second take of lightweight comes at an interesting point. If Max had not Suck taken this fight with <laughs> just right. he probably would have found himself in another title fight against the new champion, Ilya Toporia, if Volkanovski wasn't ready for a rematch in time. Yet he's content with the firefight he has in front of him on April 13th. I want to fight the best guys in the world, you know? I want to keep making my name and solidify myself as one of the greatest in the sports, and uh, this is the way you do it. And he's a beast, bro. He's a, he's a future Hall of Famer. I'm from the 8 13. I'm in the octagon. Gates is across me. It's going to be a really fun fight. A really exciting fight. And uh, the fans are going to win. The highlight is truly the perfect nickname for Justin Gaethje. He takes pride in getting into so-called car crashes and goes into every fight with the mentality to get a knockout or get knocked out trying. Is he, uh... Where is he in terms of Sean Strickland and weight? Nowhere. They, they're 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 far. Well, like Strickland's five, right? Yeah, eighty five, fifty five is a big big difference. Oh, so he's fifty. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> This is entertainment. This is entertainment. Nah, you think this that'd be a good fight? <laughs> yeah, like if you could just like scale Gaethje up, you know? He failed to claim undisputed yeah. gold. He earned yeah. every bit of the BMF. I, I, I would argue that Gaethje has a little bit more of a... A little bit, like, I would be less nervous to be in the same room as Justin Gaethje than Sean Strickland. Sean Strickland is just yeah, like... Did, did you see that thing, like, recently that he, like, posted? Who? Oh. Sean Strickland? No. Like, he's like, he's like, dude, I'm like afraid, like, I'm going to kill somebody. Like, he's like, he, and you know what, dude? He's like, he's, <laughs> yeah. He's like, he says, like, I'm, a, I'm fucked up. I'm fucked up. He's saying it, like, a lot. Yeah. And it's like, bro, one day something's going to happen and it's not going to be like, you know, like, if, if something were to happen, whether it be to somebody else, himself, whatever, there's like, there's a lot of, like, when people will be like, oh, uh, you know, when somebody, like, shoots up a school, you know what yeah, I mean? They're yeah. like, oh, you know, he kind of said Shoes. he was going to do it, you know? Yeah, like, shit, seen it coming, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying, I'm not saying, saying Sean should go, go do anything like that, but, like, yeah, I don't know, it's trauma. just, like, that he could, like, end up in, in prison somehow. Yeah, that sucks. 
But like Gaethje, dude, have you seen the video of Gaethje, Gaethje with Free Joe? Yeah, he's with his boys and he like lost his fantasy league. Oh, yeah. And they like he had to wear a dress like as his punishment. And he's just like in the dress and they're all like t- arguing about the rules of the league. And it's like he's not in a dress. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's just like it doesn't give a fuck like at all. He's just like arguing with them. He's like, "Are you fucking serious? Like, what are you gonna do? Like, can you please not flick with your arms up too much?" He continues to reaffirm himself as one of the most entertaining figures in the sport, and a win against Max Holloway will put him into another undisputed title setting next. But had this fight not been announced, his next fight was seemingly going to be for the belt anyway. But here we are. This might just be the biggest fight on UFC 300. Yeah. A true super fight. This is an incredible answer. I love that the BML belt is up for grabs. I love everything that Gaethje's putting on the line. Max Holloway's granite chin will be tested against perhaps the hardest hitter available in Justin Gaethje. Relentless output and pressure versus power not just in the hands but in the leg kicks which will be a big factor Max Holloway the yeah is an output machine the volume Shit. of numbers that he's drawing anything about that the cardio <laughs> is second to none because his legs get chopped up yeah they're just engaging because that's the big differentiator here every single guy that I'm going to face brings something different and the majority of these people with this power Max precision is quantity and that's a different way to lose and they way to fight. So yeah, I, I'm going to be prepared. A lot of fans are worried we could see Max badly hurt, or even finished as crazy as it sounds. But like we've seen so many times, he possesses the ability to break anyone down. But he's got to be I mean, careful. Walk- Dude, he lit up Ortega. He lit up Calvin Gator like dude. crazy. Aldo twice. He fucking had the, the the Korean zombie knockout was crazy. Yeah. Like he fucking um who who's uh Yair Rodriguez was like a fire fight back yeah. and forth, but he like he definitely was clearly the better like striker in it. It's like mm-hmm. literally who's beat him besides Volk as of re- recently, other than like the Dustin Poirier fight where he's like going up like similar to the Gage situation. Yeah. It's like nobody really fucking beats him. Like it's just folk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it really is. It's like unfortunate because he's essentially like in any other time champion, you know, yeah. for a while probably. Yeah, <laughs> and, I mean, he's literally like, beaten everybody else. Is, yeah, it's just like him. But it, it might be Oliveira and uh, and Islam, you know, where it's like, or uh, yeah, for a while at least it seems like Covington to Usman, you know, it's like yeah, you can beat everybody else, you can't beat him, you can't beat the guy though. Yeah, fucking crazy. Clear one, two. <laughs> because Justin can counter a big barrage with one or two huge shots and crack him. Either crack way, him. this is an electric fight. And both are ready for five rounds of carnage. In a title, UFC 300, one more King Axe party, you know? Super excited. I can't wait. Momentum is everything. I gotta touch him early. I gotta touch him hard. I gotta make it over. That's the plan. Now for the fight that Dan just kind of threw together because he needed <laughs> <laughs> In the short time that Alex Pereira has, it's crazy to think that his UFC debut was just over two years ago. That's wild. And in that time frame, he's gone six and one, beating four former champions oh, yeah, and securing shit. two undisputed titles. Damn. If you had time to reflect on your, your short meteoric rise in the UFC, you know, your headlines MSG twice, your headline UFC 300, have you had time to reflect on just how fast your rise has been? Desde quando eu cheguei na organização, muitas pessoas não acreditaram, falaram, pô, o cara veio do kickboxing, pô, acho que não vai vingar. Muitos tentaram, não conseguiram. Daí hoje eu tô aí, né, fazer a luta principal do UFC 300. Então isso pra mim é muito importante. Currently, the undisputed light heavyweight champion. His first order of business is to take on the former champion who relinquished the belt last year. They're not due touching to on the way these all fight. Will be light heavyweight champion, that he will be vacating the title. He has torn his Achilles. Like Pereira, Jamal Hill has surpassed expectations here in the UFC in a very short amount of time. Since his win on Dana White's Contender Series, he's gone seven and one, claiming the undisputed title in his last fight at UFC 283. 
in which he happened to retire Pereira's good friend, Walter Teixeira. The fact that he did beat your mentor to a training partner, Walter Teixeira, and he already got revenge on Yuri Prochaska. You know who the other one is? Jamal Hill. These are two very dangerous so strikers going head to head. Pereira wow. has so many weapons on him. Is it Marab? Is that his name? Yeah. Dude, him just holding Cejudo over his shoulder and walking around the cage with him. Like, like showing oh, off to, uh... Oh, my God. Zuck. Yeah, Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah. <laughs> that was, like... <laughs> no, like, what a... And I'm not even taking anything away from Marab, like, because he's nasty, or he appears to be nasty. But, like, the the fall from grace of Cejudo being kind of, like, unfuckwittable. Like, for a little while there. And now he's just, like... He's really good, yeah. yeah. He, he, went, he went away for a while. He came back. He lost one fight. And the second fight, he's being, he's being walked around. That like time off hurt him. But, yeah, dude. I mean, I, I know it's a fight and, like, damage is damage. But, like, Cejudo breaking his fucking left arm is huge for that kind of stuff. Oh. Was that... That was that fight. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, like, yeah, like yeah, Cejudo's, true. like, trying to, like... Yeah, I forgot about Sprawl that. and wizard and shit. Yeah. He just can't do it with his arm, and he's just like scooping him up. Yeah, that, like, that, that's sure. That's yeah, true. yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that little aspect of Eddie Brock's arm. Yeah. <laughs> a feat with nuclear power, but Hill is also extremely dangerous with big time power, and believes he can actually outstrike Pereira. I'm fully aware that I can take him down, and and I can I can wrestle better than a lot than pretty much I feel EJ. anybody that he's that he's going against. He had epic fights with Cejudo. For yeah. Me, for what I want out of this and out of this challenge, I feel yeah he got to he's got to go to sleep. They got to see the giant fall. He wants to go out there. He wants to stand. He wants to bang. He wants to put it in the face of Pereira. He's very confident about taking the shots, but the reality is, can he take the shots? They don't know. We don't know either. Now, Alex Pereira is more technical, is more experienced, does have a little bit more speed. Both men are extremely powerful. A lot of people are kind of favoring Alex Pereira because he's such a sophisticated striker. He's one of the best kickboxers that we've ever seen in the UFC. Alex Pereira will be confident. Jamal Hill will be confident. <laughs> Joe Rogan with the fanny pack. Kickboxers that we've ever seen. We've never seen in the UFC. Alex Pereira will be confident. Jamal Hill will be confident, but that's why they're going to fight. UFC 300 is going to be one of those events that people are never going to forget. This has the potential to be the greatest night of fights in the history of combat sports. Exciting. Yeah. That's going to be dope. Let us know how stiff you are. <laughs> 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 How fucking rock solid are you for UFC 300? Let us know in the comments. All right, we'll catch you on the next one.